How about that? We connected an external viewer to Linux, and it worked. First of all. So, <laughs> so if you don't believe in miracles, <laughs> you should start. Okay, I'm Haley Smolar. Uh, I work for Linbit, and we make DRBD, which is the in-kernel solution for uh, block replication in Linux. Right, and so this is multi-site, hyper-converged, open nebula with DRBD 9. All right, so uh, I work for Linbit, and uh, we have a sinister company called Linforge. Uh, Linbit is a, sort of has a vendor uh, producer model, so we make DVD and we support um, technologies around that, you know, storage and storage accessories, the kind of model. So we have like a vendor support model, and Linforge is more of a traditional IT consulting firm, and so this is kind of a joint project between both companies. Uh, so, uh, Johannes Tiefenbacher uh, worked with uh, the company on this, um, and he set up most of the system while I um, developed the, the driver that communicates between Open Nebula and DRBD. Um, right, and this is an Austrian telecommunications company. They have a site in Vienna and also a site in France, and this is a federated Open Nebula cluster. So DRBD, if you're not familiar, um, this presents um, to the user as a block device. And a block device is a spinning media, like SSD. Um, if you do LS block, you have like dev SDA1, dev SDA2. It's that kind of deal. You put file systems on it. Um, and this is uh, really far down the I.O. stack. And so no matter what kind of storage you're doing, generally it finds its way to a block device. So our compatibility is very wide, sort of by default. And we've um, been in the Linux kernel since 2009 in the mainline uh, tree, but I think uh, DRD was first, uh, first around about 1999. So we've been around for a little bit. Uh, being in the kernel is, is great. Um, it exposes us to thousands of developers, hundreds of thousands of users. And if you're not familiar with how Linux kernel development works, um, you do a really good job so that you don't end up in one of Linus Torvald's rants. <laughs> so there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of eyes on this and that it's, a, it's definitely a great boon for us. And uh, so it does synchronous replication of writes that come in. And how it does this exactly is, let's see if I can do this. Get my pointer over here. Okay, so you have an application and you, it says it's time for me to save this data. And it will push it down to the file system, pushes it down to the, uh, the buffer cache, and then it will hit DRBD. And at this point, DRBD will replicate this write. It makes an exact copy of it. And so I can't, I can't multiprocess, unfortunately, so we're going to have to do this one at a time, although DRBD will do this simultaneously. So the the, the path that it would normally take, would it would go to the um, disk scheduler, go to the disk driver, and actually end up on the physical hard disk. And then, of course, you get an ACK. Yes, I did that. Yes, I did that. And it goes back up to DRBD. At the same time, DRBD is going to send the replicated write over the network and up to its peer over here. And it's going to go through the same process, get an ACK and then send it back over. And once both writes have been successfully act with DRBD, it sends up an act back to the program. So at no point while DRBD is, so no point while DRBD is connected do you have a write that is in limbo. Is it, it's, whenever you get a write request back that's successful, it's on both machines. And if you have any questions, feel free. So DRBD um, existed a long time in a traditional HA Linux uh, cluster environment, and that is a shared nothing environment. So each machine has is capable of running the entire stack, and this is good because you know there's a lot of redundancy there, and you know it's just it's just to keep keep it's it's the simplest way to do distributed systems, and which is like saying it's the slowest way to fly in a rocket, you know. <laughs> Right, yeah, it's not, a, it's not a simple thing, but this kind of makes, makes it easier for programs that 
aren't designed with distributed systems in mind to work on one. Um, but of course, traditional HA storage is kind of giving way to SDS, where software is, you know, provision this, provision this now, deprovision it, assign it up to this machine, unassign it, move it around. Um, so in the older versions of DRD, you would sort of handwrite this config file, use administrative tools on each node separately, and it would look something like this. And so you have a, the resource over here, you know, the device it's going to present, its actual backing storage, um, and you have a little stanza for each connection. And this is as simple as it gets. I don't think I've seen a config in the wild that's quite this small. Um, so obviously doing that on two nodes is not that big of a deal, but once you get three, four, five, it really starts to be um, a bit of a cognitive burden. So um, we have the new version of DRBD that can do in connections instead of a 1v1 one, one connection. We have this new tool called DRBD Manage. And so doing the equivalent with that would be running this command, which is obviously quite a bit easier for people, but also easier for software, which allows us to write software to tell the storage what to do. And that's what this uh, storage plugin does for Open Nebula. And um, so storage plugin basically, it translates what Open Nebula expects storage to be like with what the actual underlying implementation thinks of storage. And so there's generally two parts. There's a data store manager, which is actually creating the data, putting it somewhere, um, copying it, that kind of thing. And there's a transfer manager, which uh, puts it on the VM, and so um, you can t you can have a data store that has some are interoperable, some are, are you know you can have like a like an LVM you know data store manager with an iSCSI transfer manager potentially they don't have to be the same technology, um, but ours is. So we really didn't go over storage plugins in um, the tutorial, but Basically, uh, you can go to github.com, open Nebula. They have different add-ons uh, for storage. And you'll install it on the front end node. You'll update Etsy uh, 1, 1 dconf to let it know that this storage driver is available. And then you create a new data store, and that data store uses um, the storage driver. And, it's, and then, then from that point on, volumes are created images are created the same way as you would create any other image. Right. So, uh, so the actual system architecture is uh, there's an initial setup in Vienna. This is an Open Nebula 2.5 master zone. There are uh, four nodes, two clusters each. So they have an internal and an external system. And these are housing uh, tools for their developers, so stuff like Git repos and all that kind of stuff. It's a, it's a support their internal development process. Um, so uh, it's a little, little strange. Uh, it's kind of a cluster in a cluster. So uh, hopefully this picture's not too unclear. <laughs> so these, uh, these blue boxes here, you'll have the OpenAV hyperconverged server. So Hyperconverged is but basically the storage and computing processing, you know, CPU, memory are all on the same computer. Um, so they're equal in a way. And so DVD um, replicates the data between these two nodes. But each server, um, each of the, the all the DVD storage is under one DVD managed cluster. And uh, they kind of keep separated by the sites feature in DRD Manage, which um, prevents you from doing something like somebody who has access to the internal system can't provision storage and say, put this on a node that's in the um, external system. They, they're not allowed to do that. And automatic assignment won't go to that system. So you're able to manage one less cluster than you'd have to or otherwise. So. And then, so local replications handles DRVD. And then uh, the cluster replication goes to uh, France via MySQL replication. And 
Um, yeah, so, and the setup on France is identical, uh, exactly a mirror of this. Bidirectional how? Database one in France is a database copy in Austria and a database two in Austria copies back a database in prime in France. Uh, that's a MySQL replication replication thing. I'm not actually an expert on that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so these originally were on a Gennady cluster. Um, and these were two node Gennady clusters with Dirbity uh, eight. And you know, one of the things that's really interesting about Open Nebula and DVD is it's uh, flexible enough to uh, be able to migrate this uh, automatically. And Jojo, in addition to setting up the cluster, developed the script. And so not only is it transferring nodes from a Zen hypervisor to a KVM hypervisor, it's partitioning storage, um, setting up equivalent configs, and mounting new images. Um, yeah, so they are, they are they're in the middle of this process, and eventually they're going to have eight uh, nodes on each side, four clusters total, um, pretty much the same setup as you saw on the previous slide. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I guess Q&A, does anybody have any questions? Yes. Sure. Let's get back to that. Yep. That's right. Uh, no, so you're you're restricted in size by the largest uh, contiguous space on any uh, particular node. So if you have if you have uh, three nodes, one of them has a hundred and two have fifty, then you can only have one replica of a hundred gig volume, for example. So you can't you can't sort of divide the volume because it's it's a uh, you could have a hundred gig volume, but you no, you couldn't. You couldn't. You can't. You can't break the volume up in that in that way. So if you have if you have a hundred gigs on each node, you can have um, um, yeah. If you have a hundred gigs on each node, you can have a hundred gig volume replicated two ways. Yeah. So it is. You are limited. Um, you can't deploy a volume. Well, you can't deploy one volume in a way that splits it up in that, you know. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sure. It's there. Yeah. It works. <laughs> DMD does not care. <laughs> and we also have some more exotic protocols like RDMA if you are very concerned with your latency. All right. Uh, sure. That's right. Yeah. So there's a native there's a native uh, there's a native protocol to attach um, DoD storage without a disk, and it's comparable to iSCSI. Yeah, that's done via a thin LVM. So um, DoD Manage uh, will do this through through thin. It'll make a thin snapshot using thin LVM. That I would have to dig into the code. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, any further questions? All right. Uh, I think that's it.
Yeah. So.